important part of building confidence is to physically show it. Uh, now, my next guest, Coyote Damali, is an entrepreneur from Cheshire, but you may remember him from a pretty famous TV show. Oh, yes. Two years ago on The Apprentice, Coyote was there, and I think it's fair to say, watching him on the show, that he always carried himself with confidence. Him being sure of himself made you believe in him, and let's not forget that smile. Hello, Coyote. <laughs> Hi, Asma, you are right? I'm good, thank you. Does that music fill you with dread when you hear it? Yeah, you know what? It still, <laughs> I didn't know you were going to do it. I was like, oh, man, like, just, yeah, I wasn't prepared. It got me still, I'm not going to lie to you. I thought I'll shock you with it when you come on. <laughs> to be honest, I just saw it next to me. I was like, oh, Apprentice theme tune, I'm playing that. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Coyote, what is the key to your confidence? You know, I'm so excited to be discussing this with you, you know. I mean, even speaking to Tab earlier, like, I can't wait. Like, confidence is my thing. I even studied it at university and published in self-belief. You know, I'm, it's really my skill, something I'm really excited about. So I think the key to my confidence, I think that it's borderline having a, a lack of care. Not doing what you're going to be doing recklessly, but it's having a lack of care what other people think. Because I think that the reason why a lot of people are confident is because they're too worried about what other people think about what they're doing. But mm. I think that people need to get away with that and be more brazen with it. That's a very good point, actually, because that, that's the thing, isn't it? Um, when you know that there's people watching or listening or whatever yeah. it is, um, it automatically uh, kind of sets you off. For me, whenever I've done, like, had to do public speaking, the um, the feeling I get just before is horrific. I can... I, cannot Mm -hmm. shake it because my whole stomach is like shaking inside um and it's so weird because once i kind of start i'm okay but it's just that initial everybody looking at you is really difficult yeah that's the thing and it's just that people watching but it's like you know when they say um dance like nobody's watching yes you're gonna you're gonna be doing i don't know you're gonna be dabbing you're gonna be doing maybe the macarena because you don't know if they're watching you're just letting yourself loose but that's the way it should be all the time so it's almost like being not, you're not too worried about your final outcome. Yes, the final outcome is important, but you're literally in the process of doing, you know, so you're being all borderline cocky with it without a disrespect. So when people saw me on The Apprentice, the reason I was so confident is because I didn't care whether with, did, did I, you know, was I looking like, what, how's my client? I was just in the moment. I was just too busy focused on what I'm doing. I wasn't worrying about the other, other bits around it. You were just sort of living in it and kind of thinking, what's the worst that could happen, I suppose? Yeah, I just do, yeah. Is it a case sometimes of, of like, fake it till you make it? Can you, is that a good way to move forward if you're trying to build your confidence? You know, pretend like you're confident. Does that help? See, I like what Kano says, the Kano, the rapper. He says, um, fake it till you make it? No, never that authenticated. Meaning that you have to be authentic. We can smell... You know, you can smell when someone's being disingenuous around you. So it's not a case you have to fake being confident because I believe that everyone, you are already confident. You've already got the confidence within you. But it's that fear of other people's opinions which is stopping you from attacking or going out whatever it is of reckless abandon. You've already got confidence in you. Because if I told you to sing in the shower, you are going to sound like Mariah Carey. But if I, if I tell you to sing in the shower in, in Arndale, you might, I don't know, you might sound like me <laughs> on a good day. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's only because people are watching. That's why. So you already are confident because if you're doing that same thing, no one watching, you'll be going at it. So I already think that you don't have to fake it to you make it. You've already got a confidence in you. You just need to put aside other people's thoughts towards you. Yeah, I can see that. And FYI, I always sound like Mariah Carey, so don't oh, worry about really? that one. <laughs> Even on the bad day, yeah? <laughs> uh, when you're doing things like CVs and applications that you really have to showcase yourself, some people find that actually really awkward. And, and and this week, I've had a number of friends actually who've got in contact with me and they don't actually know what their, their skills are because they don't feel like they're qualified enough for things. How do you overcome that feeling to, to almost talk about yourself on, on paper or to somebody? Because it can be quite difficult can't it mm, that's interesting so they thought is it a case of they're scared to sell themselves is that what they were almost telling you i think so i think it's it's almost when you kind of come down to it and, and you have to put onto paper you know this is mm. what i'm good at some people are you know i if i if i go back to the people i've spoken to this week some of my friends have gone oh i'm just not very good at this and then i've had to kind of go well actually you do this this and this so you are you've done it before um but it's, I suppose it's just reminding people that they have the skills, maybe? Yeah, I think what is, I mean, 
For me, I mean, I, I have struggled with CV for application forms in the past because I find it quite a pedantic process, you know. I used to put on the top of my CV, I'm a conscientious hard worker. Like, I don't even know what conscientious means, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, you literally just got to say what you have to say. Like, I, I've never used the word conscientious in a sentence. I don't even have to spell it. You know, they say, you know, they say, have you got excellent IT skills? Like, if my man has excellent IT skills, it's 2020. You know, anyone, everyone's got excellent IT skills. You just have to say it. And, it's, and one of the biggest tips I find is that if you are struggling to sell yourself, go back to your current job description or your previous jobs or whatever, and look at their job description and use the copy that they put in the job description for what you do for your roles and responsibilities and put that in your CV because they're selling the job description very well for you to apply for the job. So use that in your CV for what you've actually been doing if you're struggling. But it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. For example, I love to... Um, the guy says to me that he's a ceramic handler for a multinational in company around the world. Well, to be honest, he just washes dishes in McDonald's. Like the way that he's selling it is yeah. the way that he's selling it. You know, you definitely tell me you're a ceramic handler. Don't say you wash dishes in McDonald's. I'm a ceramic handler. So think about how you're working it. And if you're really struggling, go back to the job description from what your previous job or the job you're doing now and use that copy because that is that is HR copy. That's HR quality. Do you get what I mean? To just own it, really. Yeah. yeah. Can you give Greater Manchester that confidence boost they need? If I give you a minute to get everyone feeling like anything is possible, possible because I truly believe it is if you put your mind to it. What What would you say? If you don't feel comfortable doing that, by the way, just let me know. <laughs> no, I'm co- like it's going back to confidence. I can't. I can't talk about confidence and now I'm not be confident. <laughs> so no, and so, yeah, Although I have put you on the spot though. <laughs> no, the spot's good. I, I don't fear the spot unless it's on my face. I don't fear a spot. <laughs> But um, I'll say, so the people are great in Manchester, I think, I think the first thing, I've, I guess I'm talking to you listening right now, I'm talking to you, so if you want to get that confidence, then first you realise that it's got to come from within you, and like I mentioned, that it's already inside of you, so yes, from time to time, we all might need that confidence boost, but that confidence boost is always inside of us, and when you wake up, that's when you've got to go for it and keep him awake. But the problem is, is that a lot of people, you might be caging that beast within you because of what you think of other people's opinions or thinking that you're scared because they're watching you. But it's 2020 now. You've got people around you like that who aren't supporting you, who aren't being your fans, and maybe it's time to let them go. So I'd say to go out there, be confident, attack your goals with reckless abandon. The confidence beast is already in you, so you just need to go out there and make it happen. Amazing. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Oh, no, it's a bit. Oh, there it is. It took me a while, but I got there, Coyote. <laughs> Thank you. That was definitely worth listening to. If, you, if you're if you struggling to get your confidence boosted and you missed it, go back on BBC Sounds after the show, listen back. Coyote, thank you so much for, for giving us some tips and advice. Uh, just before you go, if there was something you wish someone had told you when you first kicked off your working career, what would it be? Mm. I'm hitting you with all I these really hard questions, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I think what I, w- I would like someone to tell me when I had my first what, job when I was 16 or whatever, I think it's more about handling the finances once you get paid. Because I'm making an assumption that you do the job, that you're good at it already, you're getting all your colleagues, but what are you doing when you get paid? Because you're working for money, right? Yeah. But when you get that money, what are you going to do with it? Because you can also make your money work for you. So in terms of investing and stuff like that. So when I was younger, I knew about, you know, ISIS and stuff like that. But when it came to stocks and shares or cryptos or something, this is something I've had to learn over time. Because you are working, you're doing your nine to five to earn money, but now use your five to nine to let your money work for you. Love it. Coyote, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you, Asma. Thank you for having me.